Welcome to season six, episode eight of the podcast. And this episode is to celebrate Andy. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we we wanted to have a catch up anyway, and we want a blow by blow account of the bodybuilding show, the lead up to it, how it was, and also post show, as I think that can you know apply to many people who you know also finished a, a dieting phase um and i'm just yeah it would just be great to hear everything so it's now one no more how many weeks post show are you two now? Weeks. uh yeah yeah two weeks two weeks now one, two. well two weeks tomorrow so quite two weeks. well let's let's rewind so I think we touched on the insanity that was your your neat and cardio before you left. Yeah. <laughs> then you then you had a nightmare trip. Tell tell us about that. Oh yeah. So interestingly, so I purposely chose to fly on the twenty second so I could arrive in the UK to fit because Kenya came off the red list. Yeah. On that date, so I was like, all right. Booked the flight. First one came up was Ethiopian Airlines. Like, good price. So I booked it. I was like, yeah, come on. Get to the airport. I've got all the paperwork, PCR test, um, everything else. Booked COVID vaccination certificate, everything. Get to the airport and Ethiopian Airlines goes, have you booked your quarantine accommodation for the UK? I was like, don't need them. I'm not on the red list. And the staff of Ethiopian Airlines, and I still haven't had a refund at all. Um, said, yeah, but because you go through Addis, <laughs> Ethiopia is a red list country. So, well, I'm not going through Addis as such. Mm-hmm. I'm literally getting off one plane, walking to another. Everyone who's flying. So, it's not, you know, I don't understand, you know, why we would. Yeah, you know, why are you then saying I've got to quarantine when I get to the UK? I said, obviously I can't quarantine when I get to the UK. I'm not paying. So just send me and I'll, I'll discuss with the British authorities. So I'm British, I want to get home. Yeah. And they were like, they were like basically it kept me talking so long with flight clients. And they said, oh yeah, you can book another one. I said, I'm not booking another one because what's the point? We're going to have to book another flight today with another airline to leave today. So I made plans. So I had to do that. Um... So, you know, I sorted all that out and, you know, I've been trying to get a refund for Ethiopia because they said I could get a refund because they cancelled it. But I booked through Expedia and, you know, they need Ethiopian Airlines to message them with a waiver. It's just all annoying. Um, So, um, just been chasing that out. It was a nightmare. So, yeah, I then had at the last minute to change flight. Went via Air France, which was great flight. You know, as I said, the food on the flight was amazing, but I wasn't eating it. Oh. <laughs> Just uh, everything looks amazing. So, no. so yeah, so it was what it, you know, is what it is. You know, so yeah, I told you the best bit was like when we got warm French sticks with butter. I was like, oh. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh. The smell was like amazing. Because what what calories were you on then? Plain food plain, does nothing for me. It's normally disgusting plain food. Yeah. But a warm French stick with butter, it smelled good. And they were yeah you know, croissants and stuff. Anyway, so I imagine you know avoid all that, get through, I and mean, get to the UK. But it was a headache, and it continues to be a headache because I haven't got roof up flight so yeah um, um, yeah. also just the last thing that you need when you're tired and really hungry yeah exactly and you know (laughs) I was trying my best not to be super snappy and angry I was trying to be but I was like I don't understand it's like airplanes airports are kind of like no man's land it's like I'm not entering I never enter Ethiopia because otherwise I would have to go through immigration uh, we don't know. There's no. There's no clear directive on it. So I'm giving you a clear directive. Put me on the plane. 
Yeah. Um, but we kept you talking for so long. Like the guy couldn't make a decision, manager, so he just kept you talking. Yeah. Oh no, no, we must close the flight. Oh. But um, yeah. So I mean, what you you'd packed all your food and stuff. What calories were you on then? Um, same. That was a low, low carb calories. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was all packed and into Tupperware, a big bag, a big cooler bag for the food, and yeah, it was all no, very you know zero carbs. Oh. I had, you know, bought some a couple of liters of water in the airport, duty free, so you take that on the plane. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, to be fair, um, my only, I had, you know, my issue was on landing, and I think it was some lack of cars, but also lack of movement because it was a night flight at the end. Because what the Ethiopian Airways flight it might be a day flight, and I was going to move around on the plane. Mm. This was a night flight, so the first first thing. Woke up. Um, well, when I got to UK, it's swelling up. Mm. Edema. Just I love water retention. Like normally, I get water retention on flight anyway, but it's normally all over my body. Yeah. yeah. Just spreads out. Yeah, notice my weight goes up a bit. This time, it was just in my hands and feet. I couldn't. And like really fatty, like ankles, big swollen ankles spilling out over the top of my vibrams. Well, um, cool. nearly weird, but it was gone the following day. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, I, yeah, guzzled water, moved around, got took some electrolytes, and it just sort of settled out. But um, yeah, which is funny, but yeah, so the flight could have been less stressful, but it was all good. But it's yeah, good that you went early and then you had and that's the thing. I couldn't, I don't understand people who who don't go early and leave it to last minute. That's that's just that's tempting for you. Yeah, it just becomes way more stress. Yeah, because I mean, you had you then had, you know, your, well, that was your peak week. So, you know, you didn't, <laughs> I mean, it would be really hard to arrive last minute and then deal with edema yeah. and <laughs> Trying to extra stress. Oh, geez. But that's the thing, like the edema and water retention would have been increased just by stress as well. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. big time. And I mean, when you when you got there and everything, like, what what was your what did you do in peak week? So let's think. I'm just going to look at the calendar on my phone. So, mm -hmm. get this right. Right, so, so I got in on the 25th. So yeah, so literally, I got in on the 23rd. As a couple of days, peak week when it started, actually didn't start for me until the Tuesday. Mm. Because the show was a Saturday, yeah. we um, what we did was kept everything the same up until Tuesday. Then did some fat loading, get carbs low. We started reducing protein because when you're that close to a show, you don't need protein merely because you know you're not going to particularly lose a lot of muscle you're not going to gain any muscle yeah. so but something's got to give to allow the other nutrients in and it's all about nutrition partitioning so you know you you load the fats to increase uh intramuscular triglycerides mm -hmm. and um you know which is good but there's not a lot of food volume in fats yeah yeah so a little bit of peanut butter and you get a lot of calories <laughs> In comparison, you know, but not a lot of satiation. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, it's not ideal. Um, but um, then that was Tuesday. Wednesday, we started moderately loading. No, I think we did two days fats. Then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we're increasing carbs. Mm -hmm. um, so... Wednesday, um, yeah, so month, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, so Thursday, Friday, yeah. And then um, end of Wednesday, we started putting more carbs in. Um, just moderately, you know, purely from rice, um, jasmine rice. You know, good thing about being in the UK, you get a little packet of jasmine rice for 65 pence from the supermarket. Yeah, okay. Crack it in the microwave. Yeah. <laughs> a minute and a half, it's done. Crack it. 
Um, I did in, add a hot cross bun because I needed to keep a little bit of fat in there yeah. and some carbs. That was delicious. Um, some rice cakes with jam because my carbs went from nothing to quite high. Yeah. And it worked as in like my carb load was great. I looked really good when I went to do tanning on Friday. I do think when I stepped on stage, I was too full. Mm. I started to spill, but I don't know if that's because I spent so long pumping up. Oh. Now, I was like, we'll get to this in a minute. You know, it's like you're queuing up, but it's still like an hour almost. Not quite queuing up, but getting all organized yeah. into your classes. But you feel like you need to do something. Yeah. So I started pumping up probably a bit too early because I've had it where I've been on, you know, I need to pump up. Some people don't need to pump up. and you know, But we'll get to that bit in a minute. We'll talk about that. But the carb up was good. Um, I had to go in on the Friday. Hang on, let me get this right. Thursday, I had to go to Birmingham to do registration. Mm. So I had to carry all my food on the train. So I, I said this to Neil the, you know, the other day. Whenever I leave the house, I carry a whole day's worth of food. Yeah, everything. Just in case. You never know what's going to happen. True. You know, rather than taking one or two meals, I'll take a whole day's worth. Yeah. Even if that means at night I'm going to be eating at tough work and it's already in there. It doesn't matter to me. You know, I'd rather have it. You know, I'll yeah. take my little bag, yeah. little cooler bag everywhere. And so I had my food there on the train to eat my little jam and rice. It's quite funny, at registration, there's lots of people eating rice cakes and, and jam and a bit of peanut butter. Oh, it, yeah. it, it went really well. It was really well organised. Yeah. Registration, a hotel in central Birmingham at Crown Plaza. Um, so got the, I got the train down, walked from Blackpool, went out, station, walked to the hotel. Probably my activity levels were a little high. We ended up increasing the carbs a little bit because mm. I think I was about to do 6,000 steps, I ended up doing like 14,000. Mm-hmm. Because just because the walk from the train station to the hotel, yeah. and then changing platforms and stuff at these big train stations like Birmingham, you know, getting different trains and, mm-hmm. you know, Preston. So that night I increased my carbs a little bit more. Um, and I was still doing a little bit of training. Um, but yeah, so I got down there for the afternoon, got um, registered, got weighed. And height taken. Yeah. Interestingly, I was taller than I thought I was. Always a bonus. Was five nine and a half, like five ten, over five ten in shoes. Yeah. But I was actually just under five ten barefoot. You know. Did that change but, your, your weight? Yeah. Weight. Come my up. weight, yeah. And I was back, you know, look. So I weighed in. Um, at registration, one seventy. I'd eaten a little bit, so but j- just under one eighty. Um, I was still carving up, so it was getting heavier. But um, so, but the cut off for my class is one ninety seven. Oh, nice! That's uh, kind of really seventeen. Good. I've got seventeen pounds to play with. Me. Oh, so you, that's eighty one. You know, sorry, I was just doing kilos. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a lot. Mm. So it's yeah. So it's plenty like weight to add. I've got yeah. You know, when I say that, you say it's a lot. It's great if I can add it. It's a, it's a lot of weight, you know. It's like <laughs> how how yeah you know, how easy is it? To, yeah, I said I'll be lucky. Yeah, you know, I will go on stage again when I've added at least ten pounds. Mm. All right, see how that looks. Yeah. Then before I add another seven, so good. But yeah, and you know, ten pounds in the right places work out. But no, really nicely organised. You know, you get there, you got a certificate. Um, you know, got the, your number and stuff. Had your photo. Oh. Um, and then, you know, looking around, there's people you recognise, so because it's such a big show, there's people you recognise from Instagram, yeah. guys from all over the world there, you know, um, there were like some, you know, some of the coaches you see on Instagram, but like guys who, you know, people like um, uh, Jamie Durego was there, these guys, Jace, um, with his guys in Cuba, yeah, so nice. these guys all in that you know, registration area, um, which is quite cool, you know, you know, the atmosphere was pretty good, yeah. a lot of people. Um, but yeah, and then uh, on the Friday, carving up still, 
Um, so I went back to uh, from Birmingham to Blackpool on Thursday. And then on Friday, I went back to Birmingham because I wanted to, you know, keep training at the gym and stuff. I didn't want to have to change that sort of stuff up. Uh, on the Thursday, you know, although we had no cardio, we still had a couple of, you know, pump session in there. Friday, you know, I just wanted to be back Friday to make sure I packed up properly. I wasn't rushing. Mm-hmm. Then I went back down to Birmingham to the hotel for the night. I had to get my tan on, which is all great. Sick. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't really walk around. It was really busy. Um, I didn't realise I could get so much access with my um, number, for my uh, competitive number. You know, because it's athlete, you can pretty much go anywhere. But it was just really busy. Like, all the stands had queues. Wow. Yeah, you know, so, like, to get free samples, and just, like, I was going to go in there and just walk around and try to grab a lot of free samples and leave. But actually, there's queues for everything. There's thousands of people queuing in um, up. So... I then met up with Ollie before we went to the tan. We went to get the tan, we took some photos. Um, well, I got tanned, which was good. They even gave you a sock, which was nice. <laughs> I had I nicked Kaya's sock. <laughs> yeah, because there's no point trying to flag it and put on a really big football sock or anything. You know, just, kids' socks are the best uh, for tanning. Um, <laughs> And but no, I was in there, and standing next to me was two open guys mm. and a, a, a classic guy, and we were chatting up. Um, so Andy Scott, um, and the guy won the super heavies. Um, let's see, Grant, but um, we have a, we have the Scottish Titan, mm. Greg, Greg. Um, and they're massive. I, di- you don't, I didn't actually realise how big, like looking, because Andy looks quite aesthetic in his photos. Yeah. Actually, when you see him up close, he's just like a disgusting monster. And I love it. I was like, I saw uh, Josh Bridgman when I was with Ollie. We stopped and chatted to him and. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Matey Boy, who's um ginger guy with YouTube channel? Hangs out with Josh. Um, t- Tim Cycles. Oh, nice. like, <laughs> so we bumped into them, chatting with them and Ollie, and um, and Josh is massive. He looked like an open class body. He doesn't. He think he's men's good. physique. He was stuffing food in his mouth. Yeah. He was like, <laughs> he just looked massive. He looked like an off-season Jay Cutler. Oh, he's no. huge. I couldn't believe how big he's got. Oh, jeez. Wow, yeah. that's crazy. Did did Ollie have anyone else competing? Which is um yeah, in the women's on the Friday, Rachel Burgess um, um for Masters Bikini. Um but actually, you know, he was there mainly meeting coaches he mentors and you know, okay, he was yeah. thinking, you know, loads of coaches come up to him, so yeah. that's good. Um but yeah, no, so Rachel did um she did all right, stat lineup, Masters Bikini is huge. Class, um, mm-hmm. her main show is actually this weekend for the PCA British finals. So, I think this is one she's been a little bit under, under dumb for the Arnold's, really. Yeah, yeah, she's in the peak now, though. Um, but no, yeah, so and I think you know, she's occasion to listen to this show. So, you know, yeah. good luck if you're, you're listening. Um, but yeah, so bumped into her, but yeah, tanning was great, well organized. Um, uh, got my tan on. Slipped some underwear on and had some photos with Ollie. Um, just straight after tanning, which was easy, so he could get a good look at me. Um, yeah. And then he gave me a lift back to Birmingham to the hotel in his Tesla, which is fun. Nice. He decided to, yeah, I don't know if you've got, you got Tesla Sports. So he decided we had a little clear bit of road. So he goes, like, check this out. And he just hit the pedal to the metal. It was literally like you're in a fighter jet, like the Mac, the G Force. I was like, it's pinned to the thing like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought it would be sick. I was like, oh, geez, I'm incredible. Oh, okay. um, yeah, no, he's uh, yeah, that's cool. But um, good just to hang out with him a bit uh, since, you know, his coaching's finishing now. Yeah. So, yeah, but um, and that was tanning. And, you know, that was the first coat tan. We, we kept the tanning relatively light because the stage lighting was so bright. Mm. 
They're super well organized. Um, the girls are all lovely in the tanning. Um, but yeah, so um, and then Saturday. So this is the annoying thing. This is the extra stress. Everyone who was coming to watch me had tickets. Yeah. VIP gold. No, not VIP. Gold tickets. On the was it Wednesday or Thursday? Uh, the Arnold sent a message saying, "If you want to watch the earlier shows like the men's bodybuilding the classic, you need a different ticket because it's like nine, and the gold ticket only gets you entry from eleven a.m." Oh yeah. gosh! Like, but this is never mentioned, so I had to then go buy everyone new tickets myself because I didn't want to expect everyone else to pay again. Oh, and I still not had any refund on the old ticket. We just now we replied to my emails initially. Now it's nothing, so I've had no no refunds on ticket pricing, um, which was very annoying, and that yeah. was bad because that wasn't explained ever no. until the last minute. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's bad. Um, but yeah, so you know that was annoying. Um, but yeah, so that was an extra stress. But sorted all that out. Um, went. The Saturday morning came, rather than getting a train to the NEC, because I was staying in central Birmingham, I decided to get an uh, Uber, mm. straight up to where I needed to be, yeah. go in, go, then, because it was early, I went and got my top coat of tan, uh, went backstage, where I just chilled out for a bit, ate a little bit. I was trying to get, like, you know, doing photos every so often on his end, just a bit more carbs, a bit more carbs. And then, then we said, oh, I'll get into your classes. We got into our classes. But um, men's, like, so classic physique was just heaving. There's so many people in there. Um, all the classes. The Masters over 40 was one of the biggest classes. That's that's <laughs> awesome. I love that. Like, because guys are literally because there's not that many masters classes. Guys yeah. are travel walk from all over to be there. Yeah, and um, and I think yeah, it was the first Arnold's. It's big, but you know, a lot of those other guys went on to win their open classes as well, their height classes. Wow. So you know, like there's a couple of really good guys like Mike Smith, who was amazing. Um, Iqbal. Uh, Javid Iqbal, um, he went on to win his class and he didn't win the overall, but he, he, yeah, he came close. I think he was second in the overall. Um, cool. And he also done men's physique, and I think he came second in the Masters men's physique as well. But so these guys would be good. You know, yeah, no. Yeah, there's one guy, it's also one guy, um, he entered, let's think about this. I think he had about seven classes. He's had loads of stuff like novice, beginners, you know, masters, um, and then men's physique as well. And it's about £175 per class. That's what I'm thinking. He had it's like to... it's insane. It's like he spent probably close to a thousand pounds on competing. Oh, sure. Our judges were probably like, Not this guy again. Like, isn't... Well, I just don't. He didn't win a. He got. Um, I think he did like in a couple of like a couple of beginners or novice. You know, he came like runner up in uh, men's physique. He did all right, but he didn't win any of his classes. Oh, don't a, think. A bad bet. Yeah, I do think that's a good. The, ha the house won the. Bet. But yeah, and it's not. I don't think he's you know going to be a pro or anything. Yeah. So I don't know. I only had the one class because you know I'm just say five pounds. I was like, you know, yeah. let's see. Um, but no, really good standard is in insane. Um, you know, I came about seventh. It's hard to know because, you know, there's two initial, we split us into two groups, went on, did the mandatories, came off, then they split us, in, or we, we lined the stage and we split us into two groups, first call out second, but um, we took us back off stage. Then, so only the top three guys mm. do their routine. Oh, mm. that's that. So um, and they're done at the end. You know, it's purely for time, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we changed it. Like Steve Weinberg was head judge, which was cool. 
Yeah, he was shouting at you in his New York accent. But I mean, reality, yeah. you know, it was a lot. Sorry, for huh? people who don't know about judges, can you tell us about him? I mean, is he yeah, so Steve there? Weinberger is probably the biggest judge in the IFBB. He's a guy who judges head judge of the Olympia most years, New York Pro. Um, he has a gym called Bev's Powerhouse Fitness, and that's where people go to get their physiques reviewed. Pros go to get their physiques reviewed by Steve. Um, yeah, and he is, you know, Bev was doing the women, his partner, Bev Francis. She did the women's judging and he did the men's. Um, but yeah, you know, huge judge. Um, you know, I'd probably... Unless you're a pro, there's very few amateurs that have been judged by Steve Weinberger. That's really Not cool. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Like the following week, he was doing the Olympia. I know. That's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. So, you know, um, that's cool. Um, but he changed it to beat things along. So normally with a two-row show, an NPC show, you go out, you have 30 seconds to hit some posing. Then you go off and then they bring you back on to do comparisons. Well we just changed it so you did one front, one back shot, then went off. Yeah. Um, so but that confused everyone because no one had told us this. We were just being sort of told as we were going by our competitors other than like oh, that's what we want you to do. And still guys okay. but it was you know it was good. Um as I said the lineup was stacked. Um speaking you know all guys great backstage having a good chat. But seeing the guys up close I know where my strengths and weaknesses are yeah like you know my legs are great as in you know they're as good as anyone's yeah. um which is awesome since my knees are so bad yeah my back is fine you know you can always add more depth from wick to a back mm -hmm. it just goes out saying that's fine you can never be too too dense in the old back <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing. so you know that's always an ongoing work um but yeah I would say chest and arms. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not gifted with massive arms. I've had bigger arms. Injuries of, you know, I think it's when I tore my left bicep, it's uh -huh. my right bicep sort of shrunk to accommodate because, you know, I lift together or, you know, or I have to work to my weakest arm. Yeah. Otherwise, I end up with one big arm. But I do think I can, if I'm careful, I can make them grow a bit. Mm -hmm. I've had an arm today, but we'll get into my new split in a minute. Um, chest as well just depth really because i have quite not a shallow chest but chest isn't very low you know if you look at someone like army it looks like his pecs almost reach his belly button no, it's yeah. like this yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 you know I'm, I'm not i've got smaller quite dense at top but they thin out towards the bottom so i've just got to try um and that and then while i'm doing that i'm also you know from my shoulders oh, wow. arms, yeah, yeah. No one's going to worry about bigger doubts, but yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot of, yeah, a lot of room for improvement, which is good. Um, and, and fun, yeah. As I said, I think I over pumped because, mm. like, I looked a bit washed out, not in all angles, but I do think, like, my abs faded before I even got on stage. You look way better back, like, in my photos of sense, Ollie. I looked at some stage photos. I was like, Damn it. Flat, I think that's water. How annoying is that? You no, know, but I think that's just water. Yeah. It may have been one of two things. Over, you know, the calves suddenly go through with a pump up and just adding, dropping water at the same time. Because for every gram of carb, four grams of water. And if it doesn't go into the muscle, it goes under the skin. Mm. Or the, actually the stress of the occasion, last minute nerves, that can also. Yeah. Uh, but one thing I'm not massively blessed with is I'm a bit like a lot of white guys. I don't have really, you know, so we can we uh, get sorry, sorry, out. Andy, you cut sorry, don't you don't have and I don't have particularly deep abs. Okay, like yeah. my abs are decent enough, but they they're not like really deeply separated. Mm. So I could add more ab workouts like plank, leg raises and see if I can increase the size of the abs. Yeah. The only thing you've got to be careful then is you don't push your stomach outwards and lose the shape. Yeah. So it's a fine line. Um, 
and I know, you know, you see it with a lot of white bodybuilders in general, you know. It could be Matan as well, you know, you just sort of lose some of that depth. But if you look at someone like um, Nick Walker, he's done the opposite. He's really made us deep, yeah. you know, doing extra ab exercises. So, yeah, yeah I'm going to probably add some more ab exercises, you know. Um, but, yeah, obliques are fine. Um, like my side shots are pretty decent overall, so I'm happy in my side shots. Increase a bit more arm size, it'd be even better. Um, but you know, I, good thing is, I look like I wasn't at a place up there speaking yeah. to the guys, but I look decent, so you know, it's just always good to know where you need to improve, exactly. Yeah, yeah. and no, I thought you looked great at your back court, it's really impressive. Um, Sorry. and yeah, what a lineup! I think that's yeah, yeah. what an achievement. But yeah, no, I mean, there were some good guys. I actually did see some guys that. Look good in their photos, but backstage they had quite bloated stomachs. Yeah. Oh, and I was like, I'm glad they were able to control them on stage. Like, I was surprised, like some younger guys, it's like walking around like they were open class bodybuilders' stomachs. Like, oh, <laughs> that defeats the objective a little bit, but yeah. you know. But um, no, the standards is amazing, you know. Yeah, it looked good, man. And then um, afterwards, did you have your House of Sin goodies lined up? I did. I did. <laughs> yeah, I, went straight to, I, I didn't line them up. I went, they had loads there. I spoke to them the day before. I went to um, Selfridges yeah. and bought plenty. Enough for a week. <laughs> yeah. On a day. You know, for a week. Um, but no, they were amazing. Um, you know, so... Must have tasted so good because I mean your prep. Yeah, do oh, anyway. Oh my gosh. The annoying thing is I was in Manchester last weekend. Manchester I went to Selfridges, but we've got two Selfridges in Manchester. And the house of sin are sold at Selfridges in the food court, the bakery section. Yeah. But this one didn't have a bakery section. Oh, no. The other one, like we had to travel to the other part of Manchester again. I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, oh. good thing about house of sin, I talked to the owner a lot. Because I really agree with like what they do. Because half their profit, or well, half the money that you pay for cinnamon rolls, go to help homelessness. Yeah, no, I like that. So I'm all for it. Um, so yeah, yeah. You know what I haven't had while I've been back in the UK, I haven't had a Krispy Kreme donut. Oh, that's that's just that's failing. standard. Isn't no, it? that's why because I was eating House of Sin. You're failing. <laughs> well, you <laughs> I don't know if I am though because. I do, I do prefer a cinnamon roll to a donut. <laughs> well, you, you said you can't have them both. There's still time. Well, I know, but you know, there is eating after show and it's taking a piss. Yeah. You so, know? what's what happened after show? You have been. Yeah. Um, so eating generally post show, you know, I, I do eat a lot generally when I'm not in off season, but that wasn't too bad. Um, stayed in Birmingham about weekend. We um, hit up some food places. Street food, I love street food. So, um, is this, you, uh, you're back. Yeah. Can I go? Yeah, just um, Just the internet. Being... It must be yours. You know, I'm on British internet. It must be better. Yeah. Um, <laughs> must be. Um, no, so, um, yeah, I went out burgers and stuff. Actually, I have the best burger I've ever had. In Birmingham, a place called Meat Meat Meat's Bun. Yeah. Really simple burger, black and blue burger. So, mm. you know, really nice Aberdeen Angus, get blue blue cheese and spice, and the lovely was cheese. Um, amazing, and some fries. And then went to the following day. I went to Taste Collective in Solihull, which is on the outskirts of Birmingham, where we had. Um, I don't know if you've seen it. Like, there's a place called uh, Strip Club Street Food, and they do a Lotus Biscoff burger. So it's a burger, but we put that Biscoff spread in there and put a Lotus Biscoff. Up. Now I've seen it, and everyone was raving about it. So I tried it. Actually, wasn't that good. It was a bit I sickly at the end. I think it was like it's just too much. <laughs> just too much Biscoff. Just you know, we're losing. Losing some stuff here, but there are some other nice food. There's some fries. Um, 
in the last few games, that was like in general, week off relatively good. Um, is it back to diet? I'm not tracking, I'm actually not tracking at all, okay. but eating what I would generally eat, chicken, you know, turkey burgers or meatballs or chicken breast and vegetables with a little bit of jasmine rice. Um, and then at the weekend, went to Manchester where more street food, mm-hmm. you know, um, and a few drinks and stuff that was fun. Um, but yeah, one thing I've noticed is. And it is, I've still got it a little bit, is um, pumps in my quads a lot. As in to the point where when I first got them, I thought it was electrolyte balance. I thought my potassium, I thought I'd go, go hyperkalemic. Yeah. I was going to have to go to hospital because I thought my nerves were packing in. Because you can get paralysed from lack of potassium. Yeah. Although it's temporary and we put you on potassium. I've heard of it happening to athletes, to bodybuilders, yeah. because where you... Um, increase sodium for a show or you know your body goes low on potassium because you're not eating potassium rich foods post show you then you eat a burger which is high in sodium and actually quite low in potassium you you end up with this imbalance and that can affect your nerves that's what i thought it might have been so i was having electrolytes and still getting it then i realized actually what it is is my muscles are just swelling with all the extra fluids from the carbs <laughs> and yeah. um triglycerides from the fatty burgers and whatever it may be and actually it's just getting pumps yeah. to the point where like like my um out of sweep on my left leg is like almost skin splitting like it gets so swollen if i walk around i do I have to bend over pick things up it's like i'm at a workout oh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy but it's going get, getting better now so it's not so yeah. good. but like if i you know sit down on the toilet, you go get up, and literally the teardrop is just full of, like, yeah. like <laughs> looks like I've been working out, the veins are poking out, and it's like, oh, man. then it becomes hard to walk, it's like you've got dogs, you're like. That's hilarious. Oh, interesting. And, and are, you, are you training, or are you taking? Yeah, I've been training, um, I'm not going, I've not been tracking, yeah. as in I've been having a bit of fun, working to my uh, split, mm. But not, you know, because I'm going to get back to it properly and do a proper plan. I'm back in Kenya and I've got my equipment there. Yeah. I'll do one plan for that. Um, but, yeah, just having fun at some gyms. Um, yeah. yeah, back to training. Nothing too aggressive or heavy. Not trying to set any PRs. Mm-hmm. But doing a lot more pyramiding and then strip sets and drop sets and stuff just to, for a bit of fun. But... Probably you would say a bit more volume based. Yeah. If this is a bit more fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So before I get back to sort of the real work of growing, um, but yeah, so all good generally, you know, um, training wise. No cardio, not been monitoring myself. Actually, interestingly, just after the show, my Fitbit stopped working, so it gave <laughs> up, it said enough of this. So, yeah, exactly. So I'm yeah. Just- Checking occasionally my phone will tell me I've done quite a few steps, but yeah. uh, wow. Yeah. So what what's the plan when you get back? Are you gonna re- reverse diet track or yeah, no, um what I'm thinking of doing is I'm thinking about and there's only a conversation with someone about this, it's going relatively low carb gym a week. Um like for the moment, what I'm gonna do is probably um reduce a little bit again, do some photos. And then go into maintenance and reverse maintenance. So, but the plan is to go lower in the week, have a couple of days together with slightly higher carb. So, like a weekly carb cycle thing, low carb, low carb, more carb. So, I'd make the most of the insulin sensitivity aspect. Um, do maybe try and do some photos in November. Because mm-hmm. when I first get back, I'm, like on the weekend, I'm going to the coast because it's kind of half term. Yeah. So, Stared at the sands, so and got full board. So, yes. yeah, I'm gonna train, I'm gonna be active, but I'm probably not gonna be watching my diet. So, I'm probably well, I'll probably keep the seafood and stuff, so it won't be too bad. That coast is easy, really. Yeah, um, so it won't be too bad, but generally, I think I will, um, yeah, just take it easy, and then when I get back to my Vasha in that week write a plan up for you know 
um, look at the equipment and then set some calories and macros and just follow those. And as I said, a couple of higher days. I've been doing this with my clients recently, at least one high day or a couple. Yeah. Just, uh, you know, and they, they all seem to be, you know, doing really well with it. So, you know, um, one, it means I can push hard, you know, push people harder during the week and push myself harder during the week, knowing that, you know, with the extra carbs that weekend, you shouldn't run flat. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, I think that sounds like a really good plan. And then, um, like, in terms of your training split, have you thought about that? Yeah, so I'm thinking I'm going to do arms, rest, then upper lower. Mm -hmm. So it's like an eight-day split. I'm going to just keep it moving around. Yeah. Um, because that way, I throw in an extra arm session. So I do arms... Uh, triceps on the push day, your biceps on the pull day, legs, then I'll do an arm session because they should recover. Arms don't take long to recover. Yeah. So then we should recover and then so I'll be hitting arms with more frequency. Yeah. I'll hit arms on the upper as well. So it may be actually arms and delts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it goes mm -hmm. well. And we'll see. Um, we'll see our chest and if I need to uh, and then my second upper day will be chest, a chest dominant upper day. So it mainly be chest. And then, yeah, go from there, see what happens. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's exciting. Well, like you said, it's nice to have feedback and like have focus for your training, kind of where exactly. to go. And I get, I, I like training myself. So for you, that'll be fun for a bit. And then if you need to. Well, that's the thing. I think I'm going to do coach myself up till Christmas yeah after Christmas see where I'm at see how I've improved I think I'll keep doing weekly check-ins mm. um, but I think if I plan depends on how much um, size I've gained mm -hmm. I'm not gained um, I'm not looking to like you know I'm going to reverse that quite slowly as I said November then slowly into the Christmas period, use the Christmas period for growing. Yeah. Um, and then see, and then reevaluate. Re I'm not in a massive rush. Um, it might be nice to compete again at the Arnold's next year, yeah. but maybe, you know, we'll see. Um, I might go to one. It's where I think it's a case of if I get a, a show in mind or next time when I want to compete again, be it the end of 2022 or 2023, then I can know when to get a coach. I'll probably have a coach for a little bit of off season, then into a prep. Yeah, perfect. And there's uh, lots of good ones out there. Oh, yeah. 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 We've discussed, me and Ollie discussed a couple of guys, you know, people that are specifically, you know, do a lot of coach, do have a lot of success with, you know, NPC and two bros mm. and kind of know what they're looking for. Yeah. You know, so that's that's not a bad way to go because you kind of know, you know, we're having a lot of success. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Well, we we were rooting for you here. Um, yeah, I appreciate it. The, the stream didn't work, did it? Which is really uh, no, it, 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 it was a lot of stream issues. About five minutes, then they brought the error, like, oh, we're sorry, but you can download it from your email later. Sorry for... Yeah, that's the thing. But I haven't seen the classic stream. No? Nope. I, I tried to check for um link that it taken down by the time I got to it. Yeah, because they said it should... They'll record and you should be able to watch it after, but they yeah. said... Yeah. Didn't. Yeah. Well, I know you've got Leon wanting to compete again. Maybe next. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So, sounds, it's, first of all, it's cheaper than the two bros pros, the registration. So, Is it? Yeah. Ah. So th there, there's a... <laughs> but, yeah, if anything, maybe next year. I'm not... Yeah, I did. Because after watching your show, then there was... The Olympia, then before that, yeah, it was, not, it was Arnold's UK, um, not, it was yeah. the Arnold Ohio, oh, yeah. Arnold Ohio, Arnold UK, then Olympia. So it'd be wow. 
had a good off season and yeah, I've been, I was even talking to Claire, same thing, just, just looking at coaches who would help us up. I would, I wouldn't I mind you prepping myself, but you've never done it. With I, coach. yeah, that's the thing. I wouldn't, I think it would help you a lot. I would also, yes, want to see what I do with a coach who has a good success rate when it comes to. Yeah, I'm thinking about um, doing maybe a PCA show, maybe at the end of the next year. Sure. We'll yeah. see. Um, it might be good because a lot of the guys who the Masters also do PCA, and there's two, because they don't have classic physique, they have classic bodybuilding. Yeah. So you have a bodybuilding trunk, so I have a classic trunk. But um yeah. and, but we don't have a no we don't have a masters category in that. So oh. but the masters guys seem to do really well. But we do I could enter the over forties bodybuilding. Yeah, hey, yeah. Um, you know a few more s- a house of sin treats, yeah. you'll be there. But that's a yeah, that's a, that's the thing. Next show I'd like to do that, like something like Maybe in a week, two shows, or just make yeah, it count. Yeah, I like, think that uh, would be. Because the last time I wanted to, but you remember PCA changed their date. Yeah. A month, and then they put them on the same date. Then, oh, yeah. like three hundred, uh, like so far yeah. away, you couldn't commute and do both. Like I did think about doing a PCA London show, which was a week after the Arnold's, but if it had been maybe two weeks after, my. It was only because I wanted to spend a bit of time with loved ones, eating, yeah. enjoying, you know, because a lot of people had, you know, like, you know, things like my birthday, I was prepping. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah, but maybe next year I'll try and do a bit more. Yeah, like in a week or two, you just just do a two, even two, three shows. It's possible. Yeah, it is possible. We are, I've got a few. Yeah, you know, it seems to be a lot of shows at the moment, like that sort of September, October time. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of shows. So, but yeah, I'm going to see, you know, we'll see. If I'm up over 190 of stage weight, I will do, um, I will compete. Um, and I will do the um, PCA bodybuilding class. As well as, um, yeah, as well as, um, uh, classic PCA, you know, PC, uh, classic PCA, classic boy, you know. Um, PCA is a lot cheaper than two boys, twins. So. Yeah, no, yeah, they, 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 sounds they're, like they're one of the most expensive. <laughs> exactly. yeah. Yeah, we still owe me a show, yeah, two people, 2020. But, um, but yeah, their shows are good, so yeah. yeah, no, I think, yeah, what an experience, and like just. Yeah, I mean, what you did was no joke to get there. No jokes. That was what five months of prep. Yeah, there's a lot five, of time. Yeah. Five yeah, months. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to do 20k steps now, Andy, and I'm suffering. And then I think of you, who is then doing two hours of cardio on top of that, and then I just yeah. stop complaining. <laughs> um, joke. What? Yeah, you it's um, yeah, it's um, it was a lot of cardio and steps. It was, you know, it's weird once the cardio started coming down, you kind of missed it, you know, because <laughs> yeah, yeah. like, your day's so scheduled. Yeah, yeah. And you know you've got to get up early, you've got to do that before you even start your day. Actually, you know, I was saying to someone, you know, I'm prepping for a bikini, I was like, if you can do your cardio, you split it, always split it so you've got fasted and fed cardio. There's no difference in overall calorie burn, but for setting up your day, Mm-hmm. It's great because you do have to get up early and then you're up and then your day's set with that fasting card, you know. And it's just that I think it's a good way to start your day. Is in, you know, whilst you're doing it, you get a lot of time to think. Yeah. You know, plan your day as you're, you know, sitting on the bike. It doesn't have to be anything too strenuous. You know? Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I might put some cardio back into my. Not too much, as in, because what I want is to have a little, you've got to be able to, you know, add the cardio in mm. on prep. So, but like maybe, you know, 10 minutes a morning just to get the heart rate going, get the brain ticking over. Yeah, I mean, 10 minutes is great, and like, because your bike is right there. Yeah. Just easy, like you say, it's a nice time to think, plan your day. Um, 
Yeah, no, it's awesome. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I think, yeah, I, I, I don't know how you're even thinking about next shows already mm. after that, but. Uh, <laughs> Maybe a bit of time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's great. And yeah, I mean, maybe you can start thinking about coaching competitors now. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah, I'm not going to coach those competitors. It's nice to be the odd one. Yeah. yeah. Because unlike gen pop clients, you know, it is a lot more taxing for people than it should be. It's a choice you've made to do it. So you can push competitor a little hard, but I think the good coaching is knowing when to pull back. Mm -hmm. I think with you know, sort of general population don't have a really fixed timeline, the yeah. best plan is to go light and get people to love the process, love the habit. But mm -hmm. with competitors, you don't need them to love the process. It's a very finite period of time. We can hate it the whole time. Because yeah. with... With competing, it's one of those. If you have to suffer, you will. Like if yeah, if just gotta do what to, you gotta do. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's yeah. the difference between the good competitors and the poor ones. The good competitors will suffer because they know it, you know they can push regardless of what phone that they're just doing. And I think you know, and there is a fine line. You, you know, you don't want people to run flat, but actually, yeah. it's what I'm saying. I'd rather bring someone in early. Yeah, and then fill them, reverse them into the show, exactly, and uh, panicking into the last week. Yeah. yeah, it almost becomes like damage control in the end. Yeah, so go hard for a few weeks, then start easing it back. Really yeah, that's yeah, true. You hope the the person you're prepping is ready for that, just because yeah, suffer fast and quick, and then ease into it nicely. So yeah. Well, you're, you're coaching a few guys for the, the show yeah. in December. Is it December? Yeah, they, 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 they're suffering because uh, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of them, it's, it's one of those, um, a lot of the things I'm doing seem new because they yeah. used to like, like what Andy said, you know, balls the wall, not knowing when to pull back. Mm. Yeah. So pulling back and seeing changes, it, it almost is like that. Which also happened with me when I, you know, JP and uh, when my friend helped me with my prep and you do some things and you're like, oh crap, it actually worked. And I probably did nothing. So there's that uh, too many people are just used to going 110 from the start. And then that's the thing. And, and you've got to try and explain to people that it's not a conditioning show. Nope. Right, and especially like open men, if you're a massive guy, you can make it conditioned show because you've got enough mass already. Already, yeah. But if you're not if you're not that big, you've got to try and maintain as much mass as possible. Mm -hmm. And so you don't want to go in flat. And if you go in too flat, so if you've gone too hard, it's almost impossible to refill those muscles you'd like it. Yes, oh jeez. It can take weeks to sort out. So you know, the reality there is you know, people going too hard can actually look flat and, and flat then makes them look less conditioned than they actually are. And that, I can tell that is the hardest part to explain where you tell, it's, but it's more, it's more like advising, you know, like more like I'm helping you from the ones I'm coaching and then there's some you just give advice and there's that look of, you have to tell me I need to increase carbs to so there's that mindset where someone's just not ready to to give full like to let you control it fully where obviously you're you're helping them but there's that no 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 I just need to be on low carb and and, and everything will work out end of story yeah that's a thing it's like Low carb isn't necessarily the answer. Nope. Some for it is for some people, for some people it's not. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like people have to realize that's why it's almost impossible to copy someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've got to see what works best for you. And sometimes, you know, you've got to keep those carbs in. Yeah. Your body uses them so well as energy source. 
and then just have a slightly higher output. Yeah, because yeah. the guys who do cardio three days and they call and it's like, I'm looking skinny and I'm like, but I told you, stop. So it's, it's, it's one of those where it's just the prep mindset where if I'm prepping, I have to do long cardio, I have to eat less and train till I die. So it's just changing that mindset and it is a bit of work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, that's the thing. People are still stuck in the, the past of the 90s where, you know, white fish and rice is where it's at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah well you know at least you know everyone's got you guys as their resources for that here which is great you can slowly start changing that oh, yeah. that, yeah. that mindset cool well i need to go and get in another ten thousand steps i'm on track did the, the swimming mobility today had to pull back myself and just recover slowly. So yeah, yeah, he yeah, is doing a lot more steps for both of us. So. Well, I, I I struggle with cardio. I just can't recover from it because we don't have a bike or anything. Yeah, if my cardio options are sort of moderate intensity to high intensity, and it just kills me. So steps, I can do steps all day. Yeah, exactly. Steps is fun. You got the dog. It's time. Yeah. yeah, you just need to pick a 10, a 10, a 10,000 step walk do it twice a day. Well, I, I'm, I'm a multiple walker, That's I prefer great. that. Yeah, I do yeah. three, like three 5k steps. Okay. No, 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 and then and then five just around the garden. So, yeah, and then yeah, five in the general. So I do day. morning, midday, afternoon, and it's one, once. Like when you think about it, you're like, that's a lot. But when you do it, it just, it's. Yeah, 5K goes quite quick. Yeah. Um, you know, if you, I always say, you know, I walk out and walk back from somewhere, you know, you know, yeah, you, know, you do 2,500 out. 2, 000, it's not a lot. Mm. You know, it's always that last walking back towards the house, it goes really quick. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I enjoy steps. Steps have always worked for me. Yeah. So that's what I, I do. Um, easy to monitor as well. Yeah. So easy. we don't really change our pace when walking. We have a natural gait. Mm -hmm. the cardio, your heart rates go up and down, and yeah. you know, mm -hmm. it's easy if you can monitor people's cardio output. You know, you're putting the same level of intensity. I always say try to keep your heart rate above that 120 mark and just keep it there. But with steps, people's gait is just generally the same, so you know. Yeah, you know, and I mean, we've got plenty of hills here, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you 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 inspired me, Andy. You might give Andy can do that, and cardio. I can do twenty k steps and not complain. Exactly. Yeah, I'm gonna put my steps. Make sure my steps are back in. I probably won't do twenty, but fifteen k. I was doing quite nicely. I keep that. Yeah, and I mean that's for you. You do big dog walks, long ones, yeah. so that's it's yeah. It's not like hard for you to get that in. No, the dogs like walking. It's like uh, yeah. Awesome. Um, well, I think it was a really interesting catch up, and um, yeah, yeah, we're really proud of you, Andy. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> Good after after seeing the amount of rice you were eating, that was. Uh... That was inspiring. Uh, what, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's like the worst amount of rice. It's like, have a little bit of carbs. It's like, all right, I'll see how much rice I can have. Yeah. Uh, can. How much is, and when you put it in your track, you're like, I'll be okay. Until you actually realize how little that is. It's like, you're like, I uh, have a screenshot. Yeah, Anyone who complains about their food now when they come to me on prep advice, I send them a screenshot. That's the thing. Advice. Ollie, uh, I think it was Rachel who was talking to you, lowered her car. She goes, Are we seem like, he goes, oh, don't worry, I'm, I'm coaching a guy who's on even less cards than this. And she messaged me and said, I bet this is you. He's talking about yeah. you. <laughs> I mean, less than you. Oh, man. Wow. Well, I mean, that struggle was worth it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we'll look forward to your safe return to Kenya. Thank you. And yeah, we'll see everybody here, everyone, in the next episode. Yeah.